Hey guys, in this class I just uh, want to show you how I mask out different parts of this um, crap here. And I just want to uh, emphasize that this, this trick actually works uh, in animation as well. So uh, that's why I kind of animated the character a little bit here. It's not great, but what we can do is um, what we are going to use is the color sets for creating masks. Um, so the first thing I'll do here is I'll go in and I'll just say color sets and I'll create a new one. Actually, I already created it. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to create a new one just so I can show you guys how I did that. So I'm going to, um, sorry, click new. And then under here, I just reset the tool. So I have the completely standard settings, RGBA, shared, it's fine. And I hit apply and that gives me this color set here. So I close this menu and I'm just going to rename this. So I'm going to call it claws. <coughs> Great. And then the next thing I'll do is uh, I'll go in here and I'll just assign a Lambert one because it's easier for me to display um, the mask with um, with a Lambert one because it's a uh, Maya legacy and Redshift is probably not native to the way that we want to paint in this viewport. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do now is after I assigned uh, the Lambert one, I'm going to go into Paint here. I'm going to say Paint Mesh and Vertex Face is Color. Great. Okay, so I'm in here in the color settings and I'm just going to dial that to uh, black and I'm going to hit flood. And it's going to take um, a good couple of seconds to just calculate all the points on the mesh. So as you can see, we're working on a scan that I kind of um, uh, decimated in ZBrush. And we're actually using that for our rig. It gives a super good realism for our character. Next thing, I'll just take this and I'll dial it up to white here. Um, if you can't find this menu, remember that you can just click on your... Um, your character here and just say paint there and then if it doesn't show up double click on this and if it still doesn't show up delete uh, close all your windows here because it might be that your tool settings are open somewhere and lastly click on this here that's the toolbox so try and double click on this one it should open up this uh, this menu here cool so now that i set this to white uh, i'm just going to go in here i'm just going to paint this white so as you can see i'm painting with like another full brush and it's quite slow uh, it's normal that it's slow because the mesh is so dense, um, but it's uh, definitely beating creating all these masks uh, um, inside a, a separate software. And you might think that I'm a little bit crazy for not wanting to implement uh, any texturing in this <coughs> in this class, but um, but it's called procedural for a reason, and that's because we want that. We want to create that randomness, uh, but the cool thing about the uh, procedural is also that we have infinite amount of details. So right now what I'll do here is um, just paint out that hand here on this crazy um, crazy texture. I could be like a lot more precise. I could sit and, and paint this back and forth. I can also, uh, if I just hold down control, uh, I'll actually paint the opposite color of what I've selected. So you can see like I'm on... I'm on black now, and if I hold down control, I paint white. So I don't need to dial that up and down all the time. That's just a bad habit. So I'll do that for just the two claws here. Oops, there we go. That's okay. And I'll do it for this one over here as well. Yeah. I mean, I could have, um, I could have uh, set down the... Um, I could have set down the amount of um, um, polygons, but I also think we get a quite a nice, nice amount of detail. And the rig is working real time. So as long as that's uh, that's the case, then we're fine. And even if it wasn't working in real time, we could just take a, a, this mesh and decimate it again and just copy our skin weights over to it. We're not gonna do that in this class. So right now, this because this is about shading. So right now, uh, here we are. I just painted out those uh, claws the best I could uh, in the amount of time we had. Um, so right there, good. And then, like this is kind of useless, right? Because it's just a mask and it's not really uh, that great yet. So what I'll do now is I'll just assign a new shader. So I'm just going to call that Redshift. And I'm just going to show you how this works. Uh, we're not going to implement it into the big shader just yet. Um, but we just got to see like what we can actually use that shader for. So right now we just applied a new shader and I'm just going to open up the hyper shade here. And you can see we have like our entire shading network from the uh, actual that we're building. Uh, we also have this random mask. Um, but right now what I want to do is just select this uh, here. I'm just going to try and say input output. We get this material. 
I can just input output to that. And that's the material we just assigned. So I'm just going to call this like a test of mask material. So that's just like our quick test here. I'm just going to try and color that something crazy like a, like a red here. And then what I'll do is I'll take the vertex. <coughs> Richard vertex color, excuse me. And right now you can see it's asking for a color set. And that's the one we just painted. And I called that class. If it doesn't work for you, make sure that you spell it uh, with the same uh, capital letters that you did when you uh, painted it in here. So if you don't remember that, uh, you can see you can go in here, existing, uh, sorry, into the color sets. And you can see, like, I call it class uh, with no uh, capital letters. So I'll just make sure that I spell that the same way inside this redshift color here. So class, no space either. Don't do like that. Just do like what you called it. And then we're going to do the tri planner. So now that I have the tri planner node, I just remember we want to use the color nodes, even though it looks like an alpha, we actually painted it with RGB colors. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to, if I middle mouse control and middle mouse drag and drop from here. So control middle mouse drag and drop, it will open up the connection editor. And I take the out color here and I put that into image X and we can see that connects it, connects it and uh, it's connected here. And then one thing we want to change is because we're using this for an animation object, we want to make sure we set this to reference. And why is that? It's because when we created this, uh, the texture for this uh, guy, we created, uh, we went into the texturing here and we created a texture reference. And you can see if you look at the texture here underneath the uh, model here, I have this called uh, the reference. And it's actually um, an object that's standing right here and it was created uh, it's Maya that creates this uh, when the character is in the, in the bind pose position. And it basically makes sure that every time Maya or the tri planner is looking for texture referencing, it looks for the reference model and not the moved model. That's important because you don't want to look for a moving model when you're trying to reference um, alpha mask and textures. So keep that in mind. And you can do that at any time. You know, you can always create a texture reference and it will know to look for that texture reference. So important, set that to reference. So once that's done, <coughs> we only, we're only going to use the actual one of the colors in here. So I'm just going to go in here, middle mouse, drag and drop again. And I'm going to get an error there probably because, let's see. The destination attribute cannot be found. Okay, well, I don't know what that is. But what we can do is just um, go in here and take the red color here. And we can take it into the diffuse weight. There we go. You get those errors once in a while. I'm just going to find like a bypass. That's fine. So now we just drop that into this one here. And uh, what should we expect to see before we render? So we create the mask here. So we're expecting, we're expecting the color only to be colored on where we painted white, which was on our claws, right? So if I take a render now, that should give me red claws and a black, and a black body. So let's see like, if that's working. Because there's no, with that mask, there should be no color going to the actual body. So let's try and just go in here. And we're just quickly going to save this. Because I'm going to talk to you like why, how I used it on this setup here. So you can see it's actually painting our claws red, which is what we want. And the rest of the body is not getting anything. So that's perfect. Um, so just a quick note on how I used it for these ones. And you can see like the tri panel vertex color here. If I go into the big shader network that we're building in the big class, um, you can see like how I use those vertex colors and, uh, and blending them together. And if you look inside the render here, you can see like this is a mass that comes from the bottom. I don't, I didn't want the, the bottom of the crab to have any colors. So the, it's actually white all under the bottom. You can see I painted out the, um, the legs. And you can also see if you take a look at the color between the body and the claws, there's a little bit of difference in the red. So I had a mask painted out entirely for the body. Uh, same thing for the, uh, for the, um, for the arms. They're, um, they have a different uh, color for the moss. So that's a little bit less. Uh, the specular pass is a little bit different on the on the body so i can actually mix and match like the mask i can take a mask that's basically on the body and subtract it from the arms and then just still influence the legs so you can learn how to subtract and use masks and set up all these um, layers of deformation so we're also using masks for our displacement our bump maps uh, and all of that stuff and we blend uh, a couple of different uh, um, um, displacement maps together as well so uh, yeah i mean uh, hopefully uh, that's a pretty cool trick it definitely changed my entire workflow when i uh, learned how to use that 
um, yeah, and um, I hope to uh, see you guys on the website. There's a lot of uh, free stuff as well, so uh, go check it out, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.